One of the questions we often get at Bema is some kind of question revolving around Marty's theology. It might be a question about what is Marty's view on this or what is Marty's view on that or what is Marty's background or what kind of church tradition does Marty belong to? What about Marty's Jewishness? That comes up a lot. Um, is Marty Jewish or not Jewish or how does that work? It's kind of hard to tell on the podcast and there's really no way to answer. Like there's so many different questions that kind of land in this particular pool. It will be hard in a frequent uh, an FAQ video like this to answer them all or to do a whole lot of stuff directly. But let me just kind of give a whole bunch of commentary about a lot of that stuff. Um, and hopefully it hits somewhere close to most of those questions. Um, first of all, I've always wanted to always deflect away from the what does Marty think? What I think about things matters very little to the thing that God has called us to. I am simply one voice, one thinker right alongside of each one of you. Um, I do understand that as a spiritual leader or as a Bible teacher, um, that what I think about things matters, that what I teach about things matters. I do, I do appreciate that aspect. And, and I always want to steward that well. I don't want to act like, well, I'm just one of you. I, I do realize that we have, um, that there's a podcast and lots of people listen to it. And there's a platform and I, I don't, I don't want to build a platform and there's no, attempt at all to want to build any sense of celebrity. At the same time, I also understand that my voice carries some weight and that's something that I have to steward. So I don't want to just be like, I'm just one of you, but on some level, I am just one of you. And what I think about stuff, th that question, what does Marty think about blank, comes from two places, often. One of those places is, what does Marty think because I really care about what he thinks and I want to know what he thinks about this. And to that, I would say, I appreciate that. And at times we'll talk about that. And that's what the podcast is for. And all of this content is so that you can begin to understand how I see things and what I think. But really, it's not about what I think. It's about me asking good questions and opening the doors and the windows of the spiritual conversation so that you can really pursue what do you think. I don't want you to mimic what I think. I want you to really think about what you think. Sometimes that question comes from a, what does Marty think about this? Because there's a litmus test. Like, I, I want to know where he stands on this issue because that proves whether or not he's a, a false teacher or a what whatever. And I'm simply just not interested in playing that game. So, um, so there's that. Um, sometimes there is... Uh, uh, questions that pertain to my own personal journey. And people are like, hey, you don't talk about your personal journey on the podcast. That's right, I don't. Um, and I don't do that because my personal journey is my own personal journey. And it's weird. It's weird to put things out on the internet where everybody can see them and critique them and start their Reddit threads about Marty and who he is and what he thinks. And it's a very vulnerable place to live. I get that. I signed up for that. I'm not necessarily complaining, but what I am saying is that there are certain things that are just mine. They're for my, they're my personal life. They're my personal walk. They're for my, my congregation, my place of fellowship, my close friends, my family. Um, I got to be careful how much I talk about my children. I got to be careful how much I put their faces and their names out there in front of everybody else because um, it's weird to parade your life in front of others. And so I do keep some of that close, closer to the chest and I purposely don't put it online because I'm not interested in having those parts of my life critiqued endlessly. One of those, one of those things is my Jewish identity. It's, it's a great root of my own insecurity because it's a messy, messy topic. It's a messy topic. My, my family has a Jewish heritage, paternal Jewish heritage, going back with our name to Western Europe. We're aware of that. We, on some level, kind of always have been. I wasn't raised in that. I was raised in a very fundamentalist, evangelical perspective and worldview. Um, and 20, 30 years ago, most evangelicalism ha had a belief that Jesus came, so why would being Jewish matter? That's what a lot of Christians think even to this day. And that's understandable. Um, there's nothing even wrong with that. But we have learned of law in the last 20 or 30 years of, of scholarship, of academia, of the world of theology, and that's shaping and changing the conversation. And it's a conversation that I find myself in the middle of in some weird ways that many people maybe don't. 
Um, and so, and so that, that makes it odd. According to Jewish perspective today, most Jewish perspective, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even be Jewish because my, my mom or my grandmother isn't observant. They, they weren't observant Jews. And so that's how Judaism is, is, uh, I don't want to say transferred, but that's how one finds their own Jewish identity in the Jewish world today. As a Jesus follower, I read the Bible with a particular perspective and a particular set of lenses. Um, in, in the written Torah, I, like I have a unique perspective to what we might call oral Torah, oral tradition, um, halakha. Uh, what is that relationship? Because I'm not, I'm not in a modern Jewish space, and I want to always respect that. I, I want to have a really respectful position with modern Judaism. I am not here to appropriate any of that. I do want to live in a way that is consistent with how I understand the scriptures and what the scriptures has called people like me to do in a Jesus context. So do I adhere to a modern Jewish authority? That feels weird as a Jesus follower. Do I adhere to like an ancient historical Judaism of Jesus 2,000 years ago? Because that feels weird because we don't live in that world. We live in this world. And so where do I, it's a very, very messy thing. Um, and I'm, I've always just been doing my best. Doing my best to live in a way that is consistent with what I understand and what I teach about the scriptures. And I've always wanted to not center myself in that conversation, because this doesn't need to be about me and how I'm trying to parse those details. That feels funny. It is funny. It feels messy to me. Trust me, if anybody is disoriented about that conversation, it's myself. And I've always just wanted to simply, as far as it depends on me, live at peace with everyone, respect Judaism for what it is, not try to offend any more than I need to, not try to appropriate that Judaism at all, but to also live in a way that respects what I understand in my own convictions, in my own faith community. So I, I don't talk a lot about that. I, I'm not going to share much more than that even here. I'm not going to tell much of my story. Because that doesn't necessarily belong on the internet for everyone else to. But I will always want to be honest. Uh, we don't need any more people, platform personalities, claiming to be something that they don't end up being. Um, claiming to have some heritage or claiming to, like that's happened too many times. I want to be really clear about where I come from and the messiness of my situation. I'll gladly, I'll gladly bow out of, of any conversation that, that may offend others. I'm not here, I'm not here to stand up for myself and my own identity. Like I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm loved. Jesus loves me. That's going to be enough. Um, and I'm going to do my best to walk out a life beyond that. Um, sometimes people want to know, uh, like what faith tradition, what theological school is Marty coming from? Is Marty a Calvinist? I was raised in a reformed Dutch reformed. That's where my adolescent, my childhood adolescent roots were when I were in a Dutch reformed, more Calvinistic theological persuasion. Um, so a lot of that is in me. A lot of that shaped me when I was young. There's still some of that that even comes out, even that I'm unaware of, and the way that my theology works itself out, and the way that my brain works through biblical conversation. Um, uh, my faith home today isn't in a Reformed context. It's almost on the other end of the theological spectrum. I belong in the independent, the stream of what we call independent Christian churches, the Stone Campbell Restoration Movement, um, Christian Church and Church of Christ, that corner of... Christianity, that's the corner that I've called home for quite some time. And that's where I worship. And that's what my faith practice looks like. I'm a part of an independent Christian church today. Uh, I, but I have deep appreciation for so many of the corners. I've learned so much from my Catholic brothers and sisters. So, so much. I've learned so much from my Reformed roots and uh, Presbyterian brothers and sisters. I, I have some great friend, Baptist friends um, God's given me a whole slew of Pentecostal friends from the Assembly of God or, or from any of those other movements. Um, I don't want to call people out by name, but I, I just appreciate so much of what I've learned from so many of these different expressions of Christendom. But that's my home. 
that's my theological reference point um, and where I, I've kind of been influenced by it all at different points of my life in many different ways. Um, just starting this fall, I'm just starting some grad work at Xavier University. Gonna gonna learn from the Jesuits and and that corner of Catholicism. And I, I love learning and I love being influenced and shaped by other uh, by other believers and what they have to add to the conversation. So that's where I've come from. Um, let's see what else. Um, uh, theological persuasions. Uh, you, you will basically bump into this as you, you, you will, you will bump into my theology as you journey through the podcast. I would say one of the schools of theology that you'll end up really finding me kind of squarely in is, um, it, when you get to the New Testament is what many will call new perspective on Paul. Um, there's a camp of scholarship that is new, new perspective on Paul scholarship. People like M.T. Wright, people like E.P. Sanders, um, uh, people like, um, oh, I'm going to draw a blank on some of those other names that are like right on the tip of my tongue. But then there's a camp within that camp in the last 15 to 20 years that's arisen that's called, called the Paul within Judaism camp. So there's, there's this world of New Testament theology, and there's, there's a part of that world that's called the New Perspective on Paul. It's a way of seeing the New Testament through a Jewish lens, a contextual Jewish lens, based on some of the things we've learned in the last 50 years of scholarship. And then within that subset, there's even even smaller subset of what's called Paul within Judaism. Um, people like Mark Nanos or, or James Dunn or uh, Amy Jill Levine or these are some scholars that if you're familiar and you're wanting to know where I land, that would be the camp of scholarship that has influenced me the most um, and that I that I kind of resonate with, that that's, that's where I'm planted theologically. That's how I read the scriptures. Uh, I learn a lot when it comes to the, from the Old Testament, the Hebrew scriptures, Tanakh. I learn a lot from Orthodox Jewish teachers. Um, I have deep appreciation for all the different Jewish traditions on different levels and for different reasons, but Rabbi David Foreman being one of those voices, um, I love reading. Currently, I'm reading a lot from, from the late uh, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs. Um, Orthodox Judaism, I probably read the Hebrew scriptures more like an Orthodox Jew as far as hermeneutic, as far as exegesis. Um, probably read probably reading them influenced by that Jewish Midrash. Um, if, the, if any of those handles, it's a messy video, but maybe a lot of those comment, a lot of that commentary gives you some reference point, some handles to start to hang some of those questions on. So that was my hope. Um, there's no easy way to just succinctly say, here's my answer to this frequently, frequently asked question. That question has a lot of different expressions. And so there's a lot of just kind of different answers that maybe you might find helpful. Um, hopefully I touched on all the, the major things. I'm sure for some of you, you don't even know what half of that stuff even was. And for some of you, you want it even more. So go deeper and be more specific. And um, so hopefully that video is helpful. And uh, yeah, thanks for asking those questions, especially when they come with a sense of care and hospitality, um, gentleness, respect, um, when you ask those questions in a way that shows me that you remember that I'm a person that has a story, um, and feelings, uh, that always means a lot to me. So thanks a lot. Thanks for asking those questions in those ways. And I hope this has helped.